Guys, welcome to box to box the mm. football talk show powered by Sports Holiday TV. My name's Uni. This is my co-host, Ali Drew. On the last episode of box to box we were joined by Talk Sports' Hugh Woosencroft, who was talking to us about the big VAR debate and all things football, and we also had some Premier League predictions. But on today's show, the transfer window is closed, so that is done. We're going to be talking transfer deadline day and all things United with the Stratford Paddock, Adam McCauley. Adam, he's a friend of the show. We've had Adam on before. Adam McCauley, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you guys doing? All right, Adam, man. How are you doing, man? Uh, mate, I'm going to go back to a video that seems to have gone viral. That's, I know, I'm a United fan, we lost 6-1, it was a shambolic day, but your reaction on True Geordie's The Kickoff show was up, it was priceless, man. Just Which one? Just, <laughs> there were six of them. First of, all, first of all, just talk to me about having all these guys around you mocking your team and mocking everything that's happening, even though, they, even though United were poor, they were dreadful, but you've got other mm. fans just rubbing in your face. How was that, man? I don't think I... Care. Obviously, that has an effect in it. The thing for me is, I don't use like usually I'm at the game. Like, if you sat next to me at a game, you'd see that I probably say things that I don't really mean or whatever. I think we're all like that. So, I don't like being in front of camera, especially when Manchester United are getting hammered like that. Yeah. And I think at one point, I just walked off like, I'm going, like, I need to go home. Like, this is because I don't want to sit there and just be moaning. Do you know what I mean? Like, just. What's the point? If if you want to see that, you can go watch Arsenal fans or something. Like I don't want to be that guy. Like so, I just thought I need to get out of here. And then I realised, hold on, bro. Like these like have brought me down to London. <laughs> They've got me on their show, and I'm walking off. And I just just thought, let me just sit down and just fix up. But then I and lost take my head it, again. take the abuse. I like, yeah, I just and then you got like Arsenal fans are the worst in it. So you got Hugh next to me just talking rubbish loving it and you just you can't you can't say anything so it's just uh it's horrible it was horrible but i love the lad so it was all right you know what let's talk about the transfer window and there's not so far because the united of let's not put it no other way they failed miserably in what, what they wanted to do this transfer window they have bought in additions we know that a uh, great addition in donny van der beek or donny van der beek mm -hmm. however you pronounce his name a uh, good player to bring in but Oli said he needed a right winger. I don't know if he, if he was looking for that centre-back, but there, there seem to be two key areas that we need to strengthen in and we haven't done. Just, Adam, just give me your opinion on this because it seems to be that the manager gets back one, maybe gets back slightly one transfer window and then just after that, it just never happens. What do you make of the whole situation, man? Um, diabolical, really, when you look at it. I think, you know, we've known for a long time that we've had people in these positions that are, are running that side of the club that don't really know what they're doing. Um, but after the season that we had, getting back into the Champions League, and when you look at, I know everyone's, everyone's, I'm sick and tired of saying his name, but everyone's going to talk about Jadon Sancho. Mm -hmm. But if you just look at that, for an example, we had a tap in, like he wanted to come, we wanted him. Dortmund wanted to sell, but for their price. And we failed to meet it. And then, even if we didn't sign Jadon Sancho, in August, if we just went, right, this ain't happening, let's move, let's, let's, let's refocus elsewhere and get somebody else, because that's not the end of the world. But they didn't even do that, and all of our business was left till last minute. And it just shows you how we've run, like, there's, there's, no, there's no real, like, the manager can have as many ideas, as many plans, as many hopes for signings as he wants we've seen it with Jose we've seen it with 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 uh, Ali even under Van Hall he got a lot of signings but they were never the ones he wanted mm. and if you if you look at it you see that the manager's fighting a difficult battle now Ali Gunnar Solskjaer has had a lot of criticism for the start that we've had to the season but he doesn't deserve criticism for the transfer window that we've had and that's been abysmal so you have to say that like it's not been good enough Manchester United needed a right winger Midfield reinforcements and defensive reinforcements. I don't think Alex Tellers resolves our defensive issues, mm. although I do think he'll offer us a little bit more going forward. Van der Beek, he gives us a great alternative. And I think just from seeing him, like glimpses of him, you can tell he's a footballer. But if you looked at the midfield, we needed a Matic replacement. Is he that? Probably not. 
Thomas Partey went to Arsenal for 45 million. You're looking at that kind of signing. It's why weren't we in for that? And I have no doubt if a player has United or Arsenal to choose from, you know, United should be front of the queue for that. So we weren't. So you look at it and you just feel there were players out there that we could have signed, didn't go for. Cavani on his own, it's not a bad signing, but you leave it to the last day to sign a free transfer. Like, he's been free all summer. We could have signed him at any point. We didn't. Like, that's where United fans are thinking, hold on, what is this? Like, what, what is going on here? Like, does, this doesn't make any sense. But we actually needed a striker. Igalo leaves in two months. Like, so if we brought Cavani in at the start of the window, you'd probably say, that's a good start to the window. Now let's see what else we can do. But it's the way we've done it. I like Danny van der Beek. I think he's a good signing. I like Alex Tellez. I think he's a good signing. The other two lads, Armad Triore and um, Facundo Pellistri, I don't know anything about them, so I'm not going to complain and I'm not going to you know, get excited because I don't know. And they're not going to be here till January or anything anyway. So it's been an awful window. Um, and we've got like, we needed maybe four or five signings. And we've got none of our priorities sorted. So it's frustrating. But then I think Tellez and Van der Beek and Cavani are good additions. Like, I think you can see that they are good additions. Yeah. Whilst also saying it's a poor transfer window. Look, I think it's I think I think it's just a, a combination of a lot of things. First of all, that six one didn't help. So f- naturally, we were already the club was toxic. You know, there's a lot of negative thoughts. We're after this right winger that we've been after for months. Not even for this transfer window, we've been after. Yes. It before. Um, and it's just that they kept taking the pace. It kept going. It kept taking, going longer and longer. Nothing was happening. There was no news for about six weeks, and then there was news that. You know, he signed a contract, but we knew that six weeks ago that he accepted terms. Sorry, but we knew that six weeks ago. So there was never any new news. There was nothing going on with Sancho. Then alternatives didn't work out. I know they tried to get uh, Osman Dembele from um, Barcelona. That didn't work out. It seems like it's just just badly, badly run. Like when you look at it from the outside, the, the, the fact is that other teams are looking at us and they're actually just taking the piss because they know look how bad these guys are run. Even Gary Neville said a couple of years ago, he put a tweet out saying, you know how badly run a team is when you look at the um, transfer deadline day and what business they have to scramble up, about and do. And it was us. It was mm-hmm. us again. Um, just, you know, going off, going off the signings that we've had, Edison Cavani, class signing, I think he's going to be a good signing. But we've not, we've not strengthened what we wanted to strengthen in the sense that we've got positions. We've got Daniel James on, on right wing. Who's, uh, and he's a left winger. Exactly. So, and he's probably not even good enough. And even Mason Greenwood, he's a striker, really. Really and truly. Yeah. I don't mind Mace being there, but you, yeah. we, needed, we needed somebody that is a natural. Like, I didn't mind Dembele on loan, you know. Like, you know, loan with an yeah, option yeah. to buy because cause Dembele of 18 months ago, two years ago, the geezer was Fantastic. amazing. Like, so, you know, that wouldn't have been a bad... It's just like we tried doing Dembele move in the last two days. <laughs> Why we not... Okay, you've known you didn't want to pay the money for Sancho, so what have you been doing in the meantime? It, they're, just, oh, they're just a shambles. Like, this, this is the only way you can... And nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change because these idiots now, they're thinking... They, they release statements like they're, they're hard done by, like the fans shouldn't be moaning and stuff. Yeah, so that. like, that's how like, out of touch they are. Like, they, they think that they're doing a good job. Um, and I suppose when it comes to their owners and their owners' pockets, they are doing a good job. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't will, will a director of football help? Because even I think there was there was a supposed uh, position going around for a director of football. Um, I think Rio was offered it, but he he said that you know it wasn't the role that people thought it was going to be. It was more of a ambassador type role. They, they named it one thing, but it was a different whole different role. What, what what do you what do you think? Do you, do you think United need somebody who's only going to <clears throat> solely on the footballing side of things? We never had a director of football under Fergie, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and if we get a director of football, do they have to, like, I don't know enough about the role, like, I'm, I don't see behind the scenes, to, but do they still require Woodward and Judge to do their negotiating? Because if they do, then we can have a director of football, you can target the players that you want, but if they're not doing the negotiating, we're still going to have the same problems. Because you've got an accountant and a banker that are going to football clubs, that are going to football players and saying, come play for us. 
Back in the day, it used to be Fergie, our captain. So Bobby Charlton would link some of them. Like, you, you'd have all these different footballing people. Look at Bayern Munich, footballing people in departments, Ajax. Like, all these teams, they, they wouldn't be run like Manchester United. Like, they wouldn't allow Ed Woodward and Matt Judge free reign over the club. Yet we do. Um, and that's because of, obviously, the owners, isn't it? Ed, Ed Woodward, if you, if you look back to 2005, his name wasn't really out there as much. Yeah. But Ed Woodward helped broker the deal for the Glazers to buy Manchester United. He was heavily involved in that deal. Um, so the Glazers love him. He's not going anywhere. And I don't see him releasing power to somebody else. Um, I don't see that happening. We do need... Because Ali's signings haven't been bad. When you look at the players, he's identified wan and Maguire. I know Maguire stank out the place on the weekend, but like our defence improved. Like Van der Beek, Bruno, um, Tellez. Like, they're not bad signings, but we're not able to get them over the line. Like, so he can identify as many players as he wants, but is it going to happen? I, yeah, I, I just... If there is a, you know, I suppose the director of football, obviously, if it's offered to people like Rio or whoever, it's almost like unless they've got the power to actually make choices, then all it's doing is people directing their anger towards them rather mm-hmm. than the owners. That's all the sort of idea of it is, I guess, unless they've got the power mm-hmm. to actually choose who they and want. Also, power. is Rio, Rio, it sounds amazing, our Rio coming back to United, but is he actually qualified for the job? Yeah, exactly. Like, this is that like how I feel they just make decisions to to look good on paper. Like, oh look, is it he's a former, he gets it, he knows the United way. When really does he know how to do the job? Like you're interviewing someone that is a BT sport pundit, all due respect to him, I love him. But is he a director of football? Like, we don't know. Like, so I feel like the even the people they interview, Patrice Evra. Like I love Paddy Evra, but is he a director of football? Like the guys on Instagram doing mad stuff every week. Like, I, I just don't get the club. Like, the, the way they try and do these decisions is mad. And now if you even look at, like, Arteta and at Arsenal, like, he's got Edu, he's got someone yeah. there to help him in terms of identifying these players. But then they're also probably got people that... We wouldn't have been able to negotiate that Pepe deal, 72 million over five years. Yeah. Like... We wouldn't have been able to... We would have ended up paying them 80 million up front. Up front, yeah, it's true. Like, I, I just... We're just mad. It's just, it's just shambles. I just want to you talk mentioned about... Evra. I just want to... Uh, you did just mention Evra. He um, <laughs> lost his head, I suppose we could say, at the weekend. I love it. Um, do you think that... Obviously, whether it was, you know, he maybe needed a bit of time to compose himself before some of the stuff he said, like giving up his Sky Sports contract and stuff. But <laughs> do you think that if we had, you know, if United had 11 players who were that passionate as he is, you know, from he really cares, obviously, do you think that it would be a different side? You know, do you think that maybe the players now do need that passion for United? You know, they, they used to have... I want not not the, maybe scared of, of Ferguson. You know, is that is that the sort of yeah option that they need? I see players that are passionate though. Like I, I think it's 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 hard to say someone's not passionate about their job. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Berbatov never showed like he never wore his heart on his sleeve, but he was he loved playing for Manchester United, and he was heartbroken if he when he for example when he didn't get picked in the Champions League final. So I think it's hard. I, I don't like to judge things on, on passion because sometimes, like, I, I, I could play for Man United and be passionate, but I'm not good enough, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I think sometimes passion and, like, flying into a tackle or screaming and shouting can mask over inadequacies. Obviously, you want to see that. I think players at United do care. Rashford cares. I think a lot of them do care. So I think you look at our problem on a weekend, that comes down to tra- like training ground stuff. Like our defense at times, I think it was for our last count after a bit, but I think it was for the third goal. Luke Shaw was at centre back. Yeah. Harry Maguire was at left back. Yeah. Like I didn't understand what was going. That's not down to the players not caring. That's down to the players just being awful at their like not being well drilled, not being like if you look at Graham Potter's side or you look at Southampton's team, they don't have players to the level of us. Like. 
they don't have the same talent, but they they're well drilled. They'll keep a clean sheet. You know, they'll they'll look good. And I think that that's where our defense is lacking. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a great attacking coach, um, and he's worked well with the strikers. I think all of them had their best seasons last year. But beyond that, I don't think we're doing enough defensive work. You can look at individual performances. Maguire was poor. Uh, Luke Shaw was poor. Like, but I don't think that's down to lacking. I think they all care. Do you know what I mean? I just think it's down to, to work on the training pitch. And it doesn't. Uh, last year, I kept saying, this defence is suspect. Yeah. Like, everyone kept saying our defensive record's better. And it was. But it was suspect. There were games where you were thinking, oh my God, how did we get away with that? And this year, we're not getting away with it. The chickens are coming home to roost, and I just think it's down to just like simple things sometimes. And I and I also think Maguire is probably going through a bad time, and it's showing on the football pitch because um, a lot happened for him in the summer. He wasn't amazing last season. He was good, but he wasn't amazing. So no preseason for him. Comes back in a lot of pressure on his head. You make one mistake, you make two mistakes start snowballing and that's what we saw like once you go down to 10 men the Spurs didn't even have to play well really when you got Kane and Son and you got a defence out of shape like ours it was easy for them so yeah I think they care but I just think it's not some of them ain't good enough and I think a lot of work needs to go in on that training pitch uh, I don't know what, what do you make of obviously we've got till October the 16th that we can do transfers with like championship teams and no, no, don't no, start again. No, no, no. But I'm going to ask you about Ismail. <laughs> so it's a name that's been linked to us for 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 a couple of weeks now, man. Ismail. So he, you know, he's a decent. I don't player. think we do it now because we can't register him for the Champions League, innit? Yeah, but you don't uh, so know I don't. I don't think that. You don't know with United. Sometimes they do the craziest shit. I'd get Ben Rama if we're going to get anyone for the yeah, championship. Yeah, no, he's good. He's good. Guy is a baller, mate. Like how's how has no one snapped him? This is what I mean. Like, even Ismail Assar, like, he's a, is his first name Ismail or is Ismail, that another yeah, Sar? There's yeah, so many yeah, Sars yeah. that plays football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Sar at Watford, like, he's a talented player. So if you didn't get Sancho and you went, all right, we'll get, we'll go for Ismail Assar. I don't think my United fans are that upset. Like, do you know what I mean? We, we'll get over it. You've, you've, you've identified a player. You didn't get him. You went and got somebody else. But we tried it again. Like, you think Watford want to let a player go on loan? That's worth 30 million on the last day of the transfer window. Like, we tried to do loan deals. Clubs knew that these lot are saving their money to go back in for Sancho or something. I wouldn't be surprised if we tried to get Sancho in January. But, but I don't even want to. I don't even want to say the guy's name. I don't even want to think. <laughs> Listen, about I'm gonna it. have to ask you one more. Can the window <laughs> opens in eight weeks? <laughs> but yeah, I know. But look, uh, you, do you feel like that's gone now? Sancho is gone because next time the transfer window opens up, his other teams are going to be involved. There's going to be more money with other teams. And he might just look at United and think, look at these guys. And we might not even be in the Champions League. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, we be. might not be in the Champions League. Like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, man. Nah, I'm done with that. I'm, uh, I'm probably not done. I'll probably be talking about it again in a few weeks. <laughs> but I'm just done. Like, Sancho's not... Ha- I don't think... I've, I agree with you. I think it's not happening. I think you'll see think potentially Sadio Mane or Salah if they leave Liverpool and they look to reinvest. Because Liverpool seem to have a quiet transfer window and then go all out the next transfer window. And i got a feeling they might be looking to buy someone like that. You've got um, Chelsea. They'll be looking to splash the cash again. Um, I don't know, the Real Madrid, Barcelona coming for him. Are we not in the Champions League? Have we changed manager? Like, does our new manager want him if we've changed manager? Like, there's so many different things that can happen. But I just feel this was the summer where we had a one, one team running at him. He was on it. He stopped going training and playing games and stuff in the last week. And it, it seemed like United just wanted him to hand in a transfer request, force the move, force the price down, and it backfired. Um, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think we'll sign anyone from the championship. And I don't think we'll sign Jaden Sancho. You know what would be crazy? Okay. What, what would be crazy if he signs for Liverpool and absolutely smashes it up and then we just sat there with Brady Daniel. Wherever he goes, he'll smash it. Yeah, he'll smash it's it. a no-brainer. You mentioned there if United get a new manager. In your opinion, do you think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is good enough to manage United right now? I felt when we gave him the job permanently at the time, I thought it was a knee-jerk decision. 
And I felt like sooner or later, he's going to get, we're going to see that he's out of his depth. But I love Ali Gunnar Solskjaer, so like, I'm always going to be behind him, you know what I mean? Um, as I would any manager, even Mourinho was in the ground and that. I was there to the gritty end, even when I knew it was over for him. But Ali, he earned the time last season. Like, last season, getting us Champions League football, after the uh, lockdown, the way we played and stuff like that, the goals we scored, you could see that if we improved the squad, we might have a chance next summer. Now, I don't think you can blame the transfer window on the start to the season that we've had, like because we've had enough to beat Crystal Palace, Brighton and, and Spurs and not concede 11 goals. So the manager has to be criticised for that. But I'm not going to come out three games into the season and say he needs to get sacked now. But my fear is, over the next couple of months, we've got some hard fixtures in the next month as well. He might get exposed and we'll be staring down the barrel of having to sack another manager um, and not only another manager, but someone that we hold so close to our hearts, you know what I mean? So it's a little bit of a, of a, of a mad one. And I feel like he hasn't been helped this summer, but we saw that with Jose Mourinho as well. He wasn't helped. And ultimately, when the results don't come, the, the manager um, pays the cost. But I also felt this last, like last year, I thought he might be gone by Christmas. Mm. And then he, he survived, you know what I mean? So... He does have the ability of churning out a result, building some momentum. We go on a run. We look good. Because a lot of the players, once they get our attack, like that Spurs game, we started so... Oh, man. I don't even want to... Oh. Well, it seems that's such a long time ago because so many things happened after it. But that passage of play, that, that first couple of... Well, the first two minutes, maybe three minutes, were great, man. But then... And then even at 2-1... Martial gets in the box like, yeah. if, oh, if Maguire didn't decide to just... He self-destructed that day, Maguire did. He was... Oh, I'd... It was... It was like, it... He made a mistake. Luke Shaw went to clear his mistake. <laughs> yeah, and then he, he threw Luke Shaw out. Like, oh, I can't explain. I can't explain that. Like, oh my God. Do you, all right. Do, like, do you think then, do you think that Harry Maguire has the... It's a hard question to actually even answer, but has the sort of mentalness, the, the mentality to overcome this? Because look, playing for Man United, every, a lot of players I've shown is hard. You could play for Roma, for example, like Chris Smalling is, be, be an amazing player. But when you come back or when you're playing at United, the pressure is on. The whole world looks at you. Do you think he can overcome that? Yeah. I think, there's a, there's a, I think our problems aren't just down to Harry Maguire. I also think our problem isn't we just need to find a centre back partnership for Maguire because I feel like he deserves some criticism for what's been going on over the last couple of months. Because I think after lockdown last year, I thought Lindelof was better than him. Yeah, I thought Maguire. Um, they both made mistakes, but Lindelof was the better of the two. And then since lockdown, like Lindelof got blamed for all like all the mistakes. Um, but I do think there's a player like you can't write him off already. Like I don't think he's worth eighty million. Like, that goes without saying. He didn't pick his transfer fee. I do think there's a player in there. I just think we look so badly organised. Um, I don't know whether he's captain Man United material. I don't know. I don't think we should have given him the armband as soon as we did. But I think he's, I think he's a good defender. Uh, he improved us last year. He's had a bad start to the season. And he needs to step it up a level. But I wouldn't write him off just yet. You know what, going off that team on Sunday, when you looked at it player by player, it was probably, you'd say it's our best 11. We had Matic, Pogba, Bruno. Mm. We, had the, we had the players that play, performed for us last season and got us to third place. What needs to be changed then? What in your eyes needs to be changed? What players need to come in, go out? What formation do you reckon suits us? Because it looks like we do. We might need a change. We've not played well for three games. It's very early days though. But mm. what changes do you reckon? I wanted to see... Like, obviously, Pogba came back in and he's, he's looked unfit. He's looked poor. Like, I want to see Van der Beek start. Like, I think every time Van der Beek's come in, he's looked like, all right, pass, move, pass, move. And I think we just need to rebuild Pogba back into the team slowly. Hopefully, he goes away on international break, looks good, um, has a little bit of a break. Um, the thing for us is we haven't got the rotation. So we can't take Rashford out and put someone in. We can't take Marshall out. Well, we probably can now with Cavani, but 
We never had those options to be able to rotate. So hopefully now with Van der Beek, with um, Cavani, with Tellers, you know, the defence is still a bit, but we've got, we've got room to rotate in there. And that freshness and that, that competition for places will hopefully bring brighter performances. I do feel like a lot of our performances were down to badly organised defence combined with the lack of a pre-season and players just being unfit. Because it, it, at an elite level, it's going to have an impact. And you look at the three teams that we've played, Palace, Brighton, Spurs. Yeah. Spurs have been playing in the Europa League since like, like in yeah. August or something like. They've had basically a pre-season. Um, I think Palace, when we were playing Sevilla, Palace were playing pre-season yeah. friendlies. Yeah. And so like, these teams have been able to prepare for the season like normal. Whereas we haven't, and I think that has a big impact, but it's far too much of it's like it's not enough of an excuse for the level of performance we saw, um, because the simple basics that you should get right, do you know what I mean? Like simple passes, like Pogba sometimes some of his passing, and you're thinking, bruv, you're you're one of the best midfielders in the world. What are you doing?" And I think sometimes it ju- we just have this snowball effect where one mistake from one player, another one makes one, and it just it just snowballs. And when you're unfit that's going to happen even more. So I'm but hoping with, but with Pogba, more fitness. You know, Pogba towards like the end of last season, there was mistakes in him. And do you think he suits this sort of playing a little bit deeper? Because you won't get the mistakes if he's a bit higher up. It's harder when Bruno's there now. Bruno's been so effective. Yeah, you, he's had that impact. But you, what do you do with Pogba, man? Because he's great. He, last year, he showed it. He showed it when Bruno came on. Him and Bruno had this partnership. But towards the last couple of games, he was making a lot of mistakes. There were some four games in there. There was certain things that happened in there as well. So what, what, what do you make of his position? I like, I like Paul Pogba. I think he's our best player, but I think he needs to kind of take some personal responsibility for his performances as well at times. Yeah. I think we rushed him back too early this season. Like he was out for weeks and then he started the first league game and you're thinking, no, I know. we brought Van der Beek for this exact reason so we don't have to rush Paul Pogba back. So I found that odd, but in terms of him, I don't like him sitting in front of the defence. I want him to get further forward in the game. Um, and that's why Nemanja Matic is so important to us. Because when he's there, he can naturally do that role, but he can't play week in, week out. Um, so getting Pogba further forward for me. I want, I've always wanted to see us play a 4-3-3. Um, you know, and, and play with a deeper line uh, midfielder with, with Pogba and Bruno as the eights. Bruno being allowed to push further forward. Pogba on the left centre mid position, where he's, he's usually best and he can just use his passing ability. And then you have the same front three. I've wanted to see us go to that. And I think um, if our fullbacks were better in terms of getting forward, which now we might have a chance to, that we will possibly go to that. Because when Oli came in, he played a 4-3-3. Matic, Herrera, Herrera, Pogba, Lingard, Rashford, Marshall, worked the tree. I think we played our best football in that formation. So I'd like to see us go to that. Because in the 4-2-3-1, you have two sixes. And whilst Pogba wears six on his shirt, it's not the best position for him to be in. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see us change that and go a little bit more like to a 4-3-3. Three, three. But I don't think our issues were down to formation like that we've seen these last three games in the league. I, I, don't, I really don't think it's down to the formation. I think it's down to just defensive organisation, a lack of pre-season, lack of fitness, lack of form and just some just abysmal performances from players and how much of the summer has created like a negative environment because yeah, we know like a lot of sports like it's all about the psychology do you know what I mean and feeling positive feeling good like how how much of it like because imagine like some of these players are coming back and you're seeing yo that's Phil Jones still in the canteen like yeah. where are you supposed to go like how come Andreas Pereira still not like I know he's gone now but like they must be turning up thinking, what the f- why, why are some of these players still here? Thought, thought we were going to have Jaden Sancho. Jaden's not here yet. Like, you can imagine players like, thinking that when they turn up for pre like, well, we haven't ever had a pre but come back yeah. and there's still some players knocking about and you're thinking, hmm. Because they're like us. They must be like us fans in terms of transfers and stuff. Like, they must want the squad to improve, even if it means that it's more competition. So, yeah, how much of that has played a part as well? Um, we got a lot of problems though. Now the transfer window is actually closed, who do you think is the best signing that's been made? For United or for generally? Both, just any anyone. 
for United, I think, I think long term Danny Van der Beek. I think short term Alex Tellers, because I think Luke Shaw has been a bigger problem. People like to say, and because we have other issues, he kind of gets away with it. So I'd say that, in generally speaking, um, Thiago Alcantara is a bargain of the summer, yeah. twenty six million pounds or whatever it was. It might have been cheaper than that. I think Thomas Part is a great signing um, for forty five million as well. That's when you hear about Declan Rice and them wanting eighty million pounds, and you can get Thomas Part for forty five. I think that's an amazing signing, and I think pound for pound, Danny Van der Beek's in top five signings of the summer. It gets overlooked because of the way our summer went. Yeah, no, it's true. Thirty-six million pounds for a player Real Madrid were about to spend, I think, forty-five, fifty million on. Um, and when you look at the intelligence that he has and and the, the way he plays, I think he's a really, really good signing. And combined with his age, I think he's got a lot of years in him. So, I'd say those three signings are the best of the summer, all in midfield as well. Um, but United's one, short-term tellers, long-term Danny Van der Beek. Actually, before before I let you go, Adam, there was a, a certain rumour that came out that Bruno Fernandes at half-time had this big sort of uh, fight or whatever with uh, Harry Maguire that Solskjaer to substitute him at half-time, which he did. What do you make of that? Because I, I, I don't know how, how true that is. I hope it's true. I, I do hope it's true as well, to be honest. I hope it's true. I hope it's slapped up everybody. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, true. Have you seen a video of him at Sporting when he like just starts booting the shit out of the dressing room and just kicking everything up and like I, I know it doesn't help situations but sometimes you need that person in the dressing room to just tell everyone what the fuck are you doing like and there's talk about him saying that Maguire about the captaincy and stuff and look it's not all Maguire's fault but sometimes you need to hear the, the cold hard truth and I don't think we've got enough bastards in the team I don't think we've got it's all too nice that's one of my things about Maguire he's not aggressive enough yeah. you know what I mean we make a mistake and he's just feeling sorry for himself like he looks like he's he's on stuff but he's not really like Martial's getting sent off and you just stood over there by the corner flag like you're a captain man um so yeah you know what because last season I can remember when Bruno and the Lindelof had a bit of a they had a bit of a kick off on the pitch and I liked it because it was that was passion I love it yeah yeah man do it do it you gotta get stuck into each other like there's nothing like there's nothing wrong with that if you let that affect your 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 working relationship or you like if you let your working relationship or your working arguments affect your your personal relationship so you idiot anyway like yeah. and if you're getting battered 4-1 at half time and you expect someone to come in the dressing room and just sit there and say all right then you you, you don't belong at man united like you need to get bollocked and he should have stayed on the pitch True. he probably would have got sent off though that's the thing <laughs> like, he's that kind of guy where he'd just think fuck this this is a joke and just get sent off yeah. and I, I, I'm here for it yeah. yeah mate it is what it is Adam oh. thank you so much for joining us sorry it's That's not under me. more positive t- circumstances well Liverpool lost this weekend so the title race is still on I guess but listen, Arsenal fans have been coming out now at them and they've said that they're going to finish over United just give me your case on why that's not going to happen they're Arsenal. <laughs> well, no. They're Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? Oh uh, no! <laughs> I know you don't like. I know. Arsenal. I know you don't like Arsenal at all. You don't like the fans at all. So that's all. Right. I went to school in the noughties. Like we we hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> in the nineties and the noughties, like secondary school in two thousand, with Arsenal fans it was on. Never get <laughs> man. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having Thank you. Thank you for having good, me. Good talking about United with you and. Uh, Hopefully the season gets better, man. Yeah, defo. See you guys soon, yes? Adam McCaller, thank you very much. Thank you. Guys, that was Adam McCaller talking about Man United as passionate as ever. If there's anyone you want to talk to about Man United, it is Adam McCaller because he doesn't doesn't hold back. Um, So, Adam, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Before we go, and next week we've got a few former players we've got lined up for you guys. We're not going to tell you who, but make sure you tune in. Uh, But before we go, make sure you support us. Like the channel, subscribe, share the content about on your social media platforms. That helps us a lot. We've also got our social media platforms at the bottom. So we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now TikTok. I'm not sure how good we are on that TikTok game at the moment, but we're improving, guys. So do give us a follow. but yeah, we've got some 
players on next week, former players on next week, pundits. So definitely give us a give us a watch. Make sure you tune in. Take care, guys. <laughs>